Hello everyone, my name is Omar, and today I want to talk to you about how to use Python to read and write XML files. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning what is XML, how to use the OS and XML modules in the Python standard library to read and write to XML, learn about XML elements and how to access them in Python, use methods to get access to tags, attributes, and text within XML, and also create a new element and write that new element to the XML file. Let's go ahead and get started. First, setting up the environment. Right now we're on Windows, Windows 10, and we're using Python 3.6.1, which is the latest version of Python available today. This code, however, that we're going to be writing is going to work on any operating system using Python 2.7 or anything above Python 3.4. Now, let's talk about XML. What is XML and what can we do with it? XML is short for Extensible Markup Language. It's similar to HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, but a big difference is that HTML is data presentation, whereas XML defines what is the data that we're going to be using. It was designed to store and transport data most often over the internet, so very similar to you know, sending JSON back and forth between client and server. And XML is easily read by humans and machines alike. XML is often compared to HTML because of how it looks. So here's a basic example of XML. You're going to have a root element in every XML file. There will always be one root element. There cannot be more than one root element. Underneath that root element, you can have several sub-elements, or child elements in this case. Within the elements themselves, they can also have attributes, so very similar to HTML as well. Within elements, you can also have sub-elements, so in this case we have a child element, then we have a sub-child element, and we can go down that tree as much as we want to. And in the middle between the tags, or element tags, we have some text, and that text is the exact data. So attributes describe the data, and the text within the tags is going to be the data itself. So let's look at another example of something that we're going to be working with to read into Python and then write to that same file. So here's kind of an example of how someone would want to use XML in real life. So let's say we have a list of products. In this case, we have a list of Python products, products directed towards the Python developer group. And our root element here is product listing. So that kind of tells us as a user that we're going to be listing out multiple products. Each sub-element of the root is going to be called product. And within product, there's going to be certain elements that describe what that product is. And in this case, we'll have a name, description, cost, and shipping cost. And as you can see here, each of these has text within the tags which is the data that we will be using. So XML is a great way, an extensible way, to organize data in a readable fashion that's easy to transport and you'll see is also easy to read and to work with in Python. So let's go ahead and start writing some Python code. All right, let's get started with some Python. As you can see here, I have my PowerShell window open and this is where I'm going to be running the Python script to read and write to XML. And this is where our Python script is. I just call it app.py. And in here, I'm going to be reading from one of these data sources. So if I click on product listing.xml, here's our data source. This is what we're going to be pulling, and this is what we're going to be adding to. And over here is where we're going to be able to see the results of our code. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first things first, we need to import two modules from the standard library. First one being the OS library, and the second one being the XML library, but specifically xml.etree.elementtree. And we're going just to call element tree ET for short, just to make it easier for us to type that out over and over again, because we will be using this a lot in our tutorial. Now the, oper the OS library is going to give us some really neat shortcuts that will allow us to find out where in the file system we are, and be able to locate the XML file. So let's go ahead and create the base path, find out where we are in the file system. 
So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called base path, and I'm going to use the OS library first method called path dot name, and this is going to return the directory name as a string of the current directory in which we're in. But we have to pass in a parameter, that parameter being where we are in the file system. So os.path.realpath, and then we're going to pass in this keyword in Python. This keyword right here basically means the file that is being run for Python. So we're going to get the real path of that file and then pass it into durname, and we should get where we are in the file system. So just to check to see if that works, I'm going to go ahead and print that, hit save, come over here to my PowerShell terminal, and run Python app.py. And as you can see here, it returned the path where we are. So we can see here, this is where I am in the my file system, and this is what Python's returning to us. It's the exact same thing. This is good. So we know that our product listing.xml file is in the data folder. So what we want to do is to be able to join this path with the data folder. And it's also pretty easy to do in Python. So we're just going to say XML file, because this is the location of our XML file. And we're going to do os.path.join. And this is going to join two paths together to make one complete path. So we want to do base path. And then we're going to use a string to say, OK, well, where is it? Well, it's going to be in the data folder. And since I'm on Windows, I have to use a double backslash product listing.xml, which is the name of the file right here. And if we print this, just to see what that looks like, and we run it, we'll see that we have the full path directly to our XML file. Perfect. Let's go ahead and take that out. All right. So now what we can do is start working with that XML file. We found it. Python has access to it, let's move forward. With XML, think of it as a tree. So you have your root, and then from your root, you branch out from there. So you can have multiple elements, multiple branches within your XML file. So we're just gonna call the main one tree. And this variable is gonna equal et, which is gonna be short for element tree, right over here, dot parse XML file. So what this is basically going to do is take the XML file and save it into memory for us to start working with. Now to isolate the root element from all the other elements in here, we're going to create another variable called root and get a method from that object because in Python, everything is an object, which means a lot of things will have different methods for us to use, kind of like shortcuts for us to get particular data. So there's going to be a tree dot get root. So whenever we parse this, we made this into tree into an object. And the object's going to have certain methods within it for us to be able to use. And in this case, we have a method called get root, which is going to give us that root element. Now that we have the root element, we can get access to every single element underneath it. Well, first and foremost, Consider this as a list. So a list in Python is, is very simple. You can have one, two, three, four, however many things in a list. And each item in the list, what we can do is we can iterate through them and print them out to see what we can have in this list. So let's use a for loop. So I'll say for child in root, and I just want to print the child. What does that look like? Let's come back over here. As you can see, we have element product at some place in memory. So we have three products, which is what we expected, and they're all objects, which means they're all going to have some sort of method. So let's say, for example, we want to see what the tag is of that child. Well, there's a property called dot tag, and that's going to give us access to the tag name of the child element. So let's save that and run it again and see what we get. So as we expected, the product element is called product. The tag name is called product. But what else do we have? Do we have additional attributes? Do we have anything else? So now that each of these tags is going to have an attribute, so what we can do is just do comma child dot attribute. Let's come back over here. Now we can see that these are the tag names. And here are the attributes. 
this is what we're going to want to do to create the next elements. So we have this. I'm going to go ahead and comment this out since we know we have access to these. But let's say, for example, I want to get access to each element within each product. So now we're talking about going into a list of a list. So we're going to be using a nested for loop for that. So for child in root, and then another, another for loop for element in child. And let's do the same thing. Let's see element.tag. And in this case, I'm going to separate them with a uh, colon. And then I want to look at the element.txt because we know that this is a property within that object and that's going to give us the text. So what we should see over here. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Now that we see the name, that's the tag. Python hoodie, that is the text within the tags. Description, cost, shipping. And then for the second one, and then for the third one. Excellent. So now we have access to each of those elements. So we can change things around if we want to. We can add more if we want to. Let me comment this out since we already know that works. Let's say, for example, we want to create a brand new element. We want to add a new product to here. So we're going to be using a method called sub element. So let me go ahead and create a new variable, new product. And we're going to use a tree again, the sub element function or method. And you need to specify where you want this element to start from. So what root is it going to be? What element is it going to be a sub child of, right? Because a sub element has to have a parent element. In this case, we want to start it from the root. And the next parameter is well, what kind of tag do you want to have it? So I want the tag to be product. And there's some other optional parameters such as attribute. And here we'll use a dictionary in Python and we're going to set ID to four. Notice that even though this is a number, we're not using an integer. We are using it as a string. The Python XML library prefers everything to be a string. So now we have a new product, and that hasn't been written to our XML, but it will be written to our XML soon. So let's go ahead and start adding some additional elements to that product element. So let's go ahead and do new, let's just do new prod, and then name equals et.subElement. And we're going to be using new product as the element. So we're going to call this one name. And we're not going to use any attributes for this. So the same thing we're going to do for each other one. So now that we have that, what we can do is we can either add additional attributes here uh, after the fact. Or what we can do is we can just add text to each and every single one of these. Let's go ahead and do that. So we want new prod name dot text. That's the at the property of that object. And we're going to say these are Python pants. Let's just say Python pants. Those, those will look great on anybody. We're going to write it. And since we have this one, which is going to be the entire XML file in memory, we want to use that same variable, but use the write function and we can specify where we want to write it to. If we want to write it on top of our old XML file, we could, or what we can do is we can add uh, or create a new file from here. In this case, I'm just going to rewrite over the XML file. Now, if I do this, what I want to do next is I want to be able to read it to see what is in there. And let's see what happens. And we definitely see four products within there. And as you can see, Python has written this thing down. Of course, it didn't add tabs and whatnot to make it easier for it to read for us. But Python added in the product, put in the ID, gave it the name, description, cost, and shipping cost, all within that root element. So this has been a very quick tutorial on how to read and write XML with Python. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you, and happy coding.